Yes. Now for updates on sports stories across the globe, Ebi Iomon joins us. Good morning, pretty lady in pink. How are you today? Uh, good morning, Vimba. Thank you so much. You're looking so good too. And good morning, Rufai. And good morning, morning Rotus. Nice to see all three of you. Yes, nice to see all three of you um, this morning. Well, without, um, we just go straight to um, the stories. We have the Super Eagles, obviously, we already know they are in training and in camp in Abidjan, and 22 players trained last night. And the only player left to be part of the squad is um, Sadi Kumar, who was expected last night. The update has not been confirmed, but 22 players played um, last, trained last night had uh, Victor Simen, Moses Simon, uh, Wilfred Indidi, Victor Boniface, all um, in training and the face off against the Republic on the 14th of this month, that's on Thursday, and they need just a draw to qualify for the African Cup of Nations. Um, most will expect them to um, clear that game with ease, but we'll see how it happens, especially as they defeated um, Benin Republic 3-0 in Uyo, but this is an away game on a neutral ground. Let's see what happens there. And we'll move away from that to the Premier League. Well, um, the biggest news in the last 48 hours in England is coming um, from a video which, was, which went viral of the Premier League referee, that's David Coutts, which um, showed him making derogatory uh, remarks against Liverpool and ex-Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp. The PGM oil has announced that he's been suspended and is currently um, on that investigations. And now this brings the question to um, the particular games he's been in charge of. And so many have talked about how there's been controversial uh, decisions. The video in question um, was about the 2020 game between Liverpool and Burnley, which was 1-1. And Jurgen Klopp had questioned his decision. And he says Jurgen Klopp is a very arrogant person and made some derogatory comments and remarks, which we can't uh, really mention on air. We'll see what happens, but it's brought a lot of controversies on the VAR, and some people say that probably this is why some of the decisions do not go in favor, as the referees or the VAR officials have their own opinions or their own favorite clubs leading on to matches. And away from that, we go to the Women's Champions League, where matches were played last night, and we saw um, Barcelona, Arsenal, um, Man City, women and Bayern women in action, and these games saw all big teams get big wins in, um, in, in those matches. We saw Arsenal record a 4-0 win against Juventus women. Barcelona women record a 7-0 victory against SKN women. And we also saw Bayern record a 3-0 victory in their own game. And Arsenal and Bayern are top of the Group C on nine points both, but Bayern top with um, um, points, and Barcelona are second on their own group. And still on the women's football, we have the CAF Women Champions League as well. We'll have a Doe Queens in action later today against Massa FC. This um, is their second game in the Women's Champions League, and they started the Champions League on a high, recording a 3-0 victory in their first game. They hope to continue this uh, um, momentum when they face up against um, the Egyptians to see what happens there for um, Edo Queens. And to the FIFA Club World Cup, it's been announced that the draws for the FIFA Club World Cup will take place on December 5th. And this is a new format that sees an expansion of 32 teams in a new tournament which will take place um, next year in June in the United States. We'll see what happens. There are so many big teams. They already have some African teams qualified. as the Al-Hali, Mamelodi Sundar, Man City um, from England, and so many other teams. We'll see what happens there. Real Madrid, obviously. We'll see what happens um, in the draws come December 5. And finally, for me, the ATP. Yannick Sina is still making waves in the ATP um, finals as he defeated Fritz in straight sets as well, 6-4, 4-4. And this is um, this is follows his first win in a um, game he played before. And we also had Medvedev in action defeating um, Demino 6-2, 6-4 in straight sets. And today we'll have matches being played. The ATP Finals has eight of the best players um, all year long fighting to be the champion. And we'll see Akaras face up against Rublev. And we also have zero face off against Kasparu. That's in the singles. And in the doubles, we also have matches being played there. That's all for me in sports today. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, starting with uh, the the ATP, of course, you know, Novak Djokovic is not playing because of his uh, his injury. But I I remember um, Rublev lost in straight sets uh, to Zverev in the last round. So I'm thinking, I mean, we'll have to see what happens between Alcaraz and Zverev. I think it's going to be Alcaraz Zverev in that uh, particular group, and then whoever comes out of that most likely faces uh, Sinner in the final. And Sinner actually that match where he beats uh, Taylor Fritz, highest ranking American player, was actually a repeat of the U.S. Open final. Uh, that uh, Sinner won. So that's, Sinner captured both hardcore um, finals uh, this year on the men's side for the Grand Slams. Uh, for the Super Eagles, uh, you know, look, as you pointed out, 3 0 victory over Benin the last time we faced them, and it is an away match. I always hate it when we say we only need a draw because then that kind of puts uh, pressure on the team. <laughs> but with so Simeon coming back, um, yeah, exactly, complacency and so on. Um, and we've got to have our Ballon d'Or nominee in the squad uh, as well. Uh, I mean, with the Super Eagles should not have a problem uh, beating them. I know it's a road game, but. They, they should come out of that uh, with, a, with a victory. And then for the f Women's uh, Champions League, I think this is Barcelona's third title. I know you mentioned that it's second place in their group um, right now, but I think uh, the way Barcelona is playing, they'll probably warm themselves up and, and, and get to another, another final and get, possibly get a, a fourth title. And for that referee with, that's being investigated, um, you got to watch what you say in this social media era. So and I'm, I'm, I think that suspension might actually lead to a worse punishment for him. So thanks for some very interesting sports stories this morning, Abi. Okay, I did ask a question yesterday, Abi, and I'm happy you gave me the answer. And the answer was about our old female league, why things are not getting any better. And when you look at it, and you look at the kind of funding that goes into female football elsewhere, you wonder what is going on. And I do not understand why female football, the first time we attended a world tournament in female football was, was far back as 1991. And since then, we've not been able to grow female football over the years. It's still been at that position to the extent that the last time, like you stated, A.B., that we had a sponsor of our female football league was two years ago. So what can be done about it? Is it that a lot of all of these groups that say, okay, women emancipation, because football is also a part of the emancipation of female folk. Is it that we cannot get them to be able to push to get at least sponsorship for women in this league that want to go the part of football? I mean, these are questions that are critical conversations, and I'm giving my searchlight of female football. Probably some other day I'll bring my searchlight on another sport in Nigeria. As regards uh, what's going on now, uh, yeah, go ahead. You want, you want to say something? Yeah, I, I want to give a, a very quick example. Yes, you have hit um, um, the new where it matters. You look at Spain. In the last five years, they've put efforts to grow their sports. About five years ago, Barcelona, five, six years ago, Barcelona were not where they were. That's women's football. Now, with the amount of money being invested into that sport, last year alone, they signed a sponsorship deal, becoming the first um, female team to have their own private jets. It, it shows the level of progression they feel in the stadiums. So now it's management and it's a systemic problem. If they put in all their efforts together, like it has shown the progress in, ba in Barcelona women football, that has translated into the Spanish women football because in the last three years they've been dominating um, female football. So, like I said yesterday, it has to be um, the efforts of both the government and the administrators. Do they know what they are doing? How are they going to brand this sport to be attractive enough to um, to bring in investments? Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not even sure. I might be wrong. I'm not even sure it gets television airtime and television coverage. Our male sports just only got on star, star <laughs> times. And there are many TV stations in yeah. Nigeria that could be beaming our female football schedules. I'm not even sure it gets television coverage. Vibai. All right. Um, very quickly now on the FIFA Club uh, Football, FIFA Club World Cup, sorry, World uh, which of course is extremely controversial because, uh, you know, f the football industry is already feeling like there's too many games. Now you're adding a Club World Cup. But, um, you know, having said that, uh, I feel, you know, I have a lot of questions about Mamelodi Sundowns being one of the African countries, uh, African clubs, excuse me, uh, being represented at this tournament. Because, of course, we know that Mam 
Melody Sundowns is owned by Patrice Motsepe, who's also the president of CAF. Uh, Mamelodi Sundowns has come under a lot of hot fire over the years because since Patrice Motsepe became president of CAF, it seems Mamelodi Sundowns is the only South African football club that only that, that ever you know gets included in all of these big matches. So big tournaments, excuse me. So of course there's a qualification process and so forth, but you know there are questions around it because people feel like well you know you have Kaiser Chiefs, you have Buccaneers, you have there are so many. Uh, uh, well-performing teams in the South African Football League, uh, the PSL. So it's just like, why is it always Patrice Motsepe's team that gets to do all the international engagements? Just a conversation <laughs> to be had. <laughs> well, the question is, um, for, uh, for someone of Patrice Motsepe's um, caliber who knows the game a lot, he also invested a lot of money into the Mamelodi Sundown. A bulk of their players in that club are in the national team because they are very good. The players who played in South Africa, the AFCON, a lot of them are from Mamelodi Sundown. So I'm not doubt about it. They have good clubs there, but they've invested a lot in the Mamelodi Sundowns. They've had some of the best coaches in the last five years. So obviously, they are just reaping the fruit of their investment, in my opinion. <laughs> Rightfully so. Thank you, Evie. Yeah, no, wait, 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 we need to touch just one, one quick point on Rufai's uh, point on the lack of um, uh, investment in female football. female football. How many people watch? Our YouTube folks out there, you guys should tell me how many of you watch female football matches. So it's, it's, it's TV. Yeah, so we need, we, there's got to be more interest from Nigerians, right, no, to justify no, the, the is, amount the of money is, going into. The truth is, if you put it on TV, mm. Nigerians will watch. There yeah, is no yeah, how. Yeah. yeah. They are, yeah. We keep complaining that yeah, we keep complaining that TV is lackluster. I mean, you can pretty much talk about most of the programs, apart from the news programs and everything. No too much variety program. If you put it on TV, mm. it will get its own audience. Right, right. But the problem is it's not even on TV as we speak today. Mm. And also the organizers, if we decide and say, okay, we want to show female football on TV, the organizers will now start to ask you for all sorts of <laughs> kickbacks that they never asked before. I mean, look at what went on even before we finally got male football league on television. It was a big problem. Thank you so much.